mortal wounding of Colonel Edward Cross on the late afternoon of July 2nd, 1863, during heavy fighting near Gettysburg famous Wheatfield is well chronicled. The location of Cross's demise is now marked by the monument of the 5th New Hampshire Infantry. With this video, my hope is to share some new facts and other perspectives of this tragic event, as well as other items I have pondered. The story told of the wounding of a cross tells us that a Confederate soldier would fire what would prove to be a fatal shot from behind a large boulder. Today, that boulder is easily found located just south of the 5th New Hampshire's monument. Looking from the shooter's position from behind the boulder, to me the best place to stand and take the shot is on the right side. The left side of the boulder is higher and there is no place for a rest. The right side has a lower and smoother position for aiming and taking the shot. These are only my observations as we will never know where that shot originated. Various accounts mention where Cross received his fatal wound. Most accounts indicate the abdomen. However, the regimental history notes in more detail on page 204, a mini ball entered the abdomen near the umbilicus and passing directly through the body, making exit opposite point of entrance near the spine. In other words, the bullet struck Cross near his belly button. To me, the idea of the bullet passing directly through the body, making exit opposite the point of interest near the spine, indicates the shot must have originated very near to cross. We know the fatal bullet that struck cross was near the umbilicus. One witness with the 148th Pennsylvania observed cross shouting and gesturing with his sword. One wonders if he was indeed wearing his sword belt and buckle. If so, the bullet must have just missed hitting these accoutrements. If not, they might have saved his life. We are told a monument to the 5th New Hampshire Infantry marks the position where Colonel Cross was standing when mortally wounded. Today, a bronze plaque on the monument notes this. On July 2nd, in command of the 1st Brigade, 1st Division, 2nd Army Corps, Cross would be responsible for the movement of the brigade. The regimental history tells us that it was while holding the brigade up to this terrible fire that Colonel Cross came to the 5th to see how his pet regiment was doing. He received a bullet through the body which proved mortal, he dying about midnight after intense agony. If one draws a line between the 5th's right and left flank markers, the regimental monument stands approximately 20 feet behind or northeast of this imaginary line of battle. This would make one consider Cross was near the center of the 5th's line of battle and somewhere behind it when he was struck. On October 6, 1885, Six members of the 5th New Hampshire Monument Committee visited Gettysburg with the intention of locating the line of battle 
as well as the precise spot where Colonel Cross fell July 2nd, 1863. The regimental history tells us the spot was marked by a stone suitably inscribed. A photograph of several of the committee's members was recorded standing next to the stone. This stone can still be located today. The original stone marker seen in the photograph has visible horizontal lines or drill marks. These marks indicate this stone was quarried. Holes would be drilled in the rock face to a determined size. Metal feathers were placed in the holes and metal wedges were inserted between the feathers. The wedges were hammered into the holes until the stone would split. Several examples of these feathers and wedges can be found on the Gettysburg battlefield. A quarry owned by William Weibel that supplied various stone objects to the battlefield is approximately 1,500 feet from the location of the 5th New Hampshire Monument. Perhaps this quarry supplied the original marker. The stone marker that rests near the monument is the original marker as seen in the photograph. However, the drill marks we recognize today are not the same as in the photograph. This is because the stone marker at some point was turned 90 degrees and now rests face down. In other words, the notation that appears on the front of the marker in the photograph is now face down. Viewing the marker from the north side, the same pattern or drill marks can be distinguished as in the photograph now laying on the ground. The monument was designed by Major L. Fred Rice, 31st Massachusetts of Boston. Its design consisted of four base boulders taken from the battlefield and covered by an octagonal block of New Hampshire granite. The original monument had inscriptions on all eight sides, but now were covered by bronze tablets. Atop the monument sits yet another boulder from the battlefield carved with the badge of the Second Corps. The monument was formally dedicated July 2nd, 1886. Soon after the dedication, several heirs were found with the monument's engravings. The killed and mortally wounded, listed as 36, was changed to 31. Several names of the mortally wounded listed provide to be incorrect. As an example, Privates Daniel C. Eaton and John W. Shaw were not mortally wounded at Gettysburg. Eaton died of wounds from the Battle of Antietam, and Shaw succumbed to his Fredericksburg wounding. In total, five names had been incorrectly listed. Bronze tablets now cover these original engravings. Listed among the killed is Sergeant Charles H. Phelps, who reportedly would kill a Confederate soldier responsible for Cross's death.
The regimental history tells us that Colonel Cross, at six o'clock in the afternoon while directing the action of the brigade, was struck in the abdomen by a mini ball in the center of his body, which passed through and out near the spine. Thus wounded, he was carried about one mile directly in rear of the right wing of the army near Culp's Hill in the midst of a wheat field. The crop had just been cut and bound into sheaves and a good number of these were gathered by his attendants. A comfortable bed was formed upon which the noble form of the dying hero and patriot was tenderly laid. The gloom of deep darkness covered all. So where was Colonel Cross taken and ultimately would die? A clue is provided by Captain Thomas Livermore, also of the 5th New Hampshire, who had accepted the position to command the 2nd Corps Ambulance Corps. Livermore and his staff were so inundated with wounded, he would not visit Cross until after the Colonel had died. Livermore tells us, I found myself unable to go to him until midnight when they rode to the spot where he lay. It was a little dell, possibly one through which a little stream ran between the Tawny Town Road and Baltimore Road, and from one quarter to one half mile from my ambulance park going towards Gettysburg. Here, under the shelter of some boulders, lay a large number of our wounded and dead who had been brought from the field. On July 2nd, the 2nd Corps Divisional Hospitals were located at the Granite Schoolhouse, located along Granite Schoolhouse Lane. So did Cross die near the schoolhouse? Licensed battlefield guide Richard Bellamy, who passed away in 2018, noted in a January 2009 post on Gettysburg Daily, discusses why he believes Cross died in the field behind the William Patterson House. Ronald D. Kirkwood, in his book, too much for human endurance has Cross dying near the Granite Schoolhouse. Both locations provide convincing thoughts. If we take a few hints from Livermore, he found Cross near a little dell. A dell is defined as being a small valley, usually among trees. Livermore noted that Cross was under the shelter of some boulders among a large number of wounded and dead. If the Granite Schoolhouse was a 2nd Division hospital on July 2nd, and this was the collection point for the wounded of the division, one would surmise Cross died near the schoolhouse. The regimental history noted Cross was carried and placed in the midst of a wheat field, and recently harvested sheaves were gathered and used to form a comfortable bed. Reviewing a Gettysburg area map that identified specific crops present during the battle, both the Patterson and schoolhouse locations have nearby fields of both wheat and hay. Both locations are near the divisional hospital at the schoolhouse, and for these reasons, we really don't know the precise location where Colonel Edward Cross dies.
The Coos Republican newspaper, published at Lancaster, New Hampshire, in its issue of Tuesday, July 14, 1863, contained an extended account of the funeral services for Cross. His casket was draped with the Union flag on which rested his sword and cap. The issue noted, Colonel Cross, wounded Thursday, July 2nd, by a mini ball, which entered the abdomen in front, coming out near the spine. He lived until 12.30 a.m. on Friday, July 3rd, maintaining his consciousness during the whole period and expressing his joy at the continued success of our arms. His body was embalmed and reached here Tuesday evening. The death of Colonel Cross is one of the more familiar accounts of the Battle of Gettysburg. My hope was to share some new thoughts on the Colonel's death. However, we must never forget the thousands of other northern and southern soldiers who would perish or suffer debilitating wounds at Gettysburg. This is just one of the reasons we visit this hallowed ground.